أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أطيع الله أطيع الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم And always a reminder for myself and abdul qalaji sadaifu miskeen wa zalim al jahal but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah from the blessings of the month of Safar and that Allah's 18th name in the 201 and the 99 names of Dalal al Khirat, 99 names of Ismullah Husna and the 201 names of Sayyidina Muhammad from Dalal Khirat that 18 has to do with Al Fatah and the opening. So there's an immense opening, SubhanAllah man hu alimun hakeem, glory be to the one whom is the knower and the whole wise that there's an opening of knowledge and wisdom, alim and hakeem are essential elements of an opening because knowledge without wisdom could be dangerous, would be the inappropriate use of knowledge without the wisdom on how to use it and understand it. That Allah opening in this holy month and the 18th name of Sayyidina Muhammad is uh, Rasulul Rahmah, that this rahmah that Allah is describing that leave their dunya, leave the oppression of shaitan and take yourself to the cave that perchance Allah dress us from rahmah and mercy and alhamdulillah that Allah granted us to live a life in which to see the holy month of Safar, another opportunity in which Allah to dress us from the immensity of the lights of Hayba and guidance, the majestic light of Hayba which comes to the soul and heats the soul towards Allah's immense oceans of mercy and grace and that the lights of wisdom and hikmah and knowledges that to dress the soul and illuminate the soul through all darknesses and difficulties. InshaAllah Hajj Shahid will recite from Surat Al Kahf verse 10 and 11 inshaAllah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Shaykh Nurjan thank you for watching the video that you're watching inshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. <laughs> من لدنك رحمة وهيلنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على أذانهم في الكهف سنين أددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم وبركت رسول الكريم and that when the youth retreated to the cave and the du'a was that, Ya Rabbi grant us from your presence a rahmah and prepare for us our affairs to be rightly guided. 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا الرحمة وحيننا أمر رشدا means that why Allah giving for people to go to a cave because there must be a message for us at every moment and that these are not the stories of old where we read them as a story. But what Allah want for us is that to meditate and contemplate and that everybody has a cave and their cave is their heart and their chest that retreat from the busyness of dunya, the oppression of dunya and the enforced enslavement of dunya. That don't think that there's no slavery, everybody is enslaved, they're just clever. When outright slavery was banned they decided to create a new type of slavery an involuntary servitude in which the person is enslaved by finance, enslaved by money, by loans, by credit cards and these are the unseen chains that bind people that they feel and they think themselves free because this is the role of shaitan is to make them feel that they are free and prosperous but in reality they are bound by chains that they cannot see and they are beholden to those whom hold those chains. So means then the slavery of dunya and enslavement of dunya is very real, very powerful, very difficult to escape and Allah is giving for us an understanding that run to the cave. Because Allah's attributes within the cave is a rahmah and then to become rushd that the amr, we want to be from ulul amr, the people whom they follow the command of Allah and that only in this cave Allah is describing that you have to leave their oppression, leave what shaitan is asking and run to the cave. And in the cave asking that, Ya Rabbi that guide me. Send the light and guidance upon me, keep me under your amr and your command to reach to the oceans of realities, the oceans of hay, the realities of nur and light and knowledges, all of these happening within the cave. So that every moment we have a cave that Allah has given to us and it's the heart of the insan It's which we described before is the holy Kaaba. That Allah has a Kaaba in Mecca but Allah has a potential Kaaba in everyone's heart. If they clean their heart, wash and purify their heart and everything within their chest they wash and purify and circumambulate their inner reality, Allah describes, I'm not on heaven, not on earth but I'm on the heart of my believer. And that that cave is the cave that Allah is asking for us to run to. Means these are the understandings why tariqah uses Surat al-Kahf as immense importance because this is a sign of, mu of muraqabah and muhasaba. That otherwise if you read it as a story of old, oh this is just a tale, somebody's telling us a tale and we go on with our life or that the Qur'an is guiding at every moment. And Allah as soon as we hit into this hijab, this tajalli, this emanation of this holy month, Allah is reiterating in this month especially, take a life in which you enter into the cave. Do you first agree that there's an immense oppression, that I'm being enslaved in every direction? There's no way out of it because everybody has to, to live within the system. As soon as you identify the system then it's not enslaving you and you're enslaving it. So you, are you using it for your benefit or are you enslaved by it? And then Allah is reminding for us and Prophet inspiring within us is to have a life in which you enter into your cave.
and that every rushd, every amr, every command, every maturity, every rashida we described last night to become rush is to be ripened. That when the, the fruit is growing by moonlight but it's sweetened by sunlight, means that no matter what we're trying to become mature Allah only within the cave can make somebody to become rush, to become sweetened and, and ready. That they have been sweetened by Allah that they are of a state of perfection by Allah and that can only be from the people of the cave and our life is to be from Ashab al kaf So can there somebody be rushed who never entered into a cave and when you talk to them about meditation they said, no there's no meditation. There's no cave in Islam, there's, there's no command from Allah that we're, we're all youths and Allah is not commanding us to enter into a cave, leave what they worship and run into the cave. So Allah is giving all of Surat Al-Kahf is a major dahleel for tariqahs and the other devious groups they actually don't like to talk about Surat Al-Kahf and they have a very warped understanding of Surat Al-Kahf, oh yeah that's the Surah that gives us a dalil to argue with people. I said, that's not what you should have understood. Surat Al-Kahf is all about manners and etiquettes of how to enter into the cave and then when we get into the subject of Sayyidina Musa is the manners of dealing with those whom are from the cave. And when Nabi Musa wanted to meet one of them, then Allah begins to teach from Qur'anic manners how to accompany somebody whom has been taught by Allah So means the entry of the cave Allah is giving us, there is a physical location for every servant that you must enter, you must seek refuge in Allah from the busyness of your world and enter into your cave and in your home you should make a cave. In their home there should be a space set aside for meditation for your salah at the ending of every salah sitting in tafakkur and contemplating. Even if just a few minutes after each prayer to communicate, to, to connect one's heart and communicate with the Divine the Presence and that we make a cave like a Ashab al-Kaf in our home. And then we train ourselves to be now from the people of the cave in which we are continuously running from oppression. When we understood that Allah is giving the understanding of muraqabah by saying a cave because Allah could have just give a different example in any way but the fact that Allah is giving a, a symbol of a location that seek in this location your ability to shelter yourself from all of the badness of the world. And everybody has a location that they should set up within their home which is their sanctuary, which they have their busy schedule, their busy lives, they have an area in which they change the clothing from their busy world, they shouldn't be praying in the same clothing. They should try to wash when they get home, change their clothing to, to signify leaving the material world and now entering into the spiritual realm and that that sanctuary of theirs is where they pray, they meditate, they do all of their connections and that, Ya Rabbi even if my cave is only but for an hour, a half hour, a few minutes every day that this is where I'm asking Ya Rabbi that you dress me, bless me. That grant me from your amr, grant me from this maturity, grant me from these knowledges, let me to attain a rahmah. How can you attain a rahmah? Means how can you achieve a presence with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad without tafakkur, without being and entering into that cave of rahmah and mercy. Then Allah gives us now an understanding for the people who want to be from the people of the cave. And so we cast a cover of sleep over their ears within the cave for a number of years. A 
I think last year we talked also that why Allah is describing now from the characteristics of Ashab al-Kahf that Allah casted a cover like a parda or hijab upon their ears. Doesn't it seem like for somebody called sleepers of the cave that Allah would cast something over your eyes? How do you signify sleeping and hearing? So it means there must be a reality within that reality. <clears throat> that Allah is drawing to our attention the importance of hearing and the importance that your eyes are a window to your soul. But more important than the window to your soul is the door to your soul. Means that's why we described in tafakkur and contemplation and, and meditation that Allah has given permission to the shaykhs that when we meditate and do, do zikr they have a, an authority from Allah to begin to pull the energy of somebody's soul from their ears and can summons them to be in the presence of that zikr and that reality because there's an immense importance in your sami, the one whom hears. Your ears are the door to your soul and Allah is directing our attention because again remember the logical would say that we covered their eyes and they became sleepers. But why would these immensely important example of sleepers of the cave, Allah is giving you a hint that we cast a cover over their ears and then they slept. Because our life is about the importance of these ears. If these ears are not submitting and this understanding of these ears are not understood and not under contemplation, we don't understand the effect of what's happening with our ears and our soul. But shaitan knows it and that's why every bad sound and every bad badness now is based on here. The shaitan can contaminate and destroy the soul by its hearing. Means that what the servant hears that becomes now the talk of energy, vibration and now manifestation. If shaitan wants to destroy the vibration of someone's soul and if you destroy the vibration you destroy the manifestation of its light, beatific light vibrates very beatifically high. If you take the vibration down and low and filled with bad words the illumination of the soul is crushed and then darkened. And as a result the destruction of the soul is more powerfully destroyed by the ears than by the eyes. So shaitan's first attack is going to be by ear. When we understood that what Prophet asked of his nation, be from Samina wa Tana, be from the people whom they hear the call and they hear the command and labbaik, we heard and we are the first to hear the command of Allah and we are present because He's drawing our attention to the immense importance of your soul's door and your ability to hear, safeguard the hearing. That these sounds and musics they're not random, these sounds and lyrics they are not random. They are on the attack, this is the battle from Dajjal against the destruction of humanity. And those whom are trying to safeguard their humanity and safeguard their presence for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi then they must be aware that the battle level is on the ears. And that with shaitan if he has access to somebody's ear he has access to their entire soul, their vibration and then into their heart. And that's why the waswas, that's why the listening. That's why they, they listen to everything, they, they follow anything that anyone is saying. 
They, they find this one, that one, this one is an authority, they listen and what shaitan is doing is by entering into their ears he has their attention. And that's why Allah described for us, for Prophet because he's the exemplar of beyond imagination that don't say to Prophet to listen to me. Why? Because the ears and hearing is only for Allah Again stressing the ears have to submit to Allah and when they're for Allah then they listen to Prophet When they listen to Prophet then they follow the Ulul Amr and that's it, they don't listen to anyone else. The advice of anyone else is not something that they are going to bring into their ears, enter their heart and then begin to affect their entire understanding and being. So there's an immense stress on the importance of hearing and that shaitan is battling for the hearing of insan so that to waswas, to whisper, to guide, to create doubt and to create every form of difficulty. And that Allah is directing for those whom wish to be from Ashab and kaf that you must have trained your hearing and that's why when we say that our form of meditation, the tariqah form of meditation is never in silence. Your biggest protection for your hearing is to put on salawats. So when you meditate you put on the nasheeds, the naat and salawat and this is your greatest protection, never silent. So when somebody is asking questions of over analyzing um, maybe they're meditating in silence but there is no silence, there is absolutely no silence. Uh, any void of salawats will be filled by shaitan. As soon as you think you reach a, a place where you can be silent, you're really not silent, you're sitting alone with shaitan. And as a result shaitan will begin to whisper in your ear, every problem of your life, every issue will begin to come and that's when you know you're sitting with shaitan. So there is no silence. If the ears can hear reality they would hear the immense praisings of the angels upon Sayyidina Muhammad Everything from Malakut is all salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad And that is the greatest energy and the greatest protection. So then the people who want to be from the cave they have to understand those tools that never put yourself in a place where it's going to be silent because shaitan is the one who's going to be with you in that silence. Keep whispering into you, keep giving you to have doubt, keep having you to overanalyze something. There is nothing like that. So means uh, people whom train they know that anytime they want to make their connection immediately they play the salawats. Why? Because it's an immense protection. That the shaitans are not going to sit there and whisper while you're listening to salawats because the salawat is burning them. So when the salawats are playing they have to leave. But as a result of the salawats you're now bringing all of the angelic manifestations around the servant. And as a result of the salawats the angelic reality begins to praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad why? Because they can't sit and listen to Prophet's uh, praisings without praising even more beatific. So it brings a tremendous energy and as a result of that energy they begin to meditate, they see themselves in Medina, they see themselves at Ruza Sharif with their shaykh and asking them to connect, make the energy to happen, make the connection to happen, make their heart to be connected, do their awrah, do their zikrs. And that's what it's meant by entering the cave and covering the hearing. Because as soon as you cover and understood the importance of the hearing, you understand the ability of shaitan to, to break the condition of the servant. If Allah had not controlled the hearing that at any moment when they entered into a trance shaitan would have arise and, and awakened them through the faculty of their hearing. So anyone who wants to reach a state of perfection and a state of annihilation 
they have to begin to train on the importance of hearing. That my ears for Allah for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and for the teaching of Ulul Am the awliya and that my ears and my understanding and knowledge only from those sources that are encrypted and beatific energies to enter into my guidance and enter into affect my heart. And every time I sit to do of anything of a spiritual nature it's in the praisings and salawat of Sayyidina Muhammad and then they begin to make their connection, they make all their understanding and every light and every dress and every blessing to come upon them. And when the servant understands the importance of that they understand with that same praisings and they meditate and contemplate that energy can begin to pull their soul out of their body. The one who wants to leave their body will be leaving it by the power of the salawats. Once they begin to train themselves because if they don't know the armory imagine then the amount of danger somebody could run into that they sit and then in the silence shaitan is playing with them, is talking to them, is whispering to them. How would Allah open an energy for that person to leave their body, to enter into a state of death? Everything has to be exactly the way the heavenly security has lined the situation to be. They train with that energy, they train with the salawats. When these beatific and angelic realities come their soul departs from the body like Mawlana would describe like a hair in ghee. The state of death for pious people because their meditation is a state of death as if to take a hair out of a liquid butter just flows right out. Because of the love of their salawats, the love of Prophet immediately they feel themselves always leaving their body. And because that's a safe environment because all the angelic reality and all the beatific energies. If the student is not understanding that how could then anything open? Well they would open themselves into a dangerous environment and dangerous energies. And that, that yeah that has a, a immense importance. And the people who want to lend themselves to hypnosis and, and all these other, other magical things. They went to the children's school and they said, oh they brought a hypnosis person for graduation. And alhamdulillah I talked to the kids before about that and I said that don't ever do those things because the only reason that works is, is a, a break of your awuzu. <clears throat> and he said, yeah I asked the, the, the guy who was doing that. He said, do you think your, your hypnosis works if I don't let you? He said, no. You have to be willing to allow them to hypnotize you. It means you broke your contract with the awzu. But it gave a much deeper understanding that if you let somebody to take control of your ears, they can, can take control of your entire being. And that's the danger of those people whom are trained in that. that I want you to be hypnotized. You say, okay, now I want you to listen to my voice. Means you've already broken the awzu, you've given this person the ability to enter into your soul's controls and they have the ability to begin to suggest and plant suggestions and, and do all sorts of mischievous activities. Not saying that they all are but it's against the principles of these protections and these practices. Because we understood the importance of ears, you don't give your ears to anyone and definitely not to play with and say, do you mind if I practice on you to do these things? Say, no, of course I'm not allowing you to do such a thing nor am I ever accepting that and that way their type of practices could never affect a person who does not allow it. Means in your life and this has a tremendous importance of what's happening now, you're not to be a malleable person. I don't know if that's the correct English but you're not somebody who's supposed to be a Play-Doh in which anyone can mould you into what they want you to be because you allow yourself to listen to everything and everyone. And the danger that children and youth are having and I, we've given a talk about the blind leading the blind, everybody now because of social media 
is taking advice from everyone. The kids go to school and they take advice from everyone and they're giving their ear to everyone. This friend said that, my friend said this, this friend's and they grow up with the same concept that 20 people are telling them what to do and what to be and how to be in this world and in this life. And that's now the danger of humanity, that's the danger of, of what's happening that it's affecting the soul, it's affecting their guidance system, it affects in their entire coordinates. And the most difficult aspect of growing up in today's day and age is that, I don't want to listen to anyone. But you are bombarded by every type of social media, every type of what we called before influencers. They're meant to influence people, 99% of them to influence towards Satan because they're not working for Allah they're influencing towards satanic understandings and satanic energies. When we understood that then we understand why there's a war over the ears. There's a war on earth right now for the ears of humanity. Once you gain the ears of humanity the next contamination will be the eyes. But first they want to break down the door. So the door for the soul because they're not interested in your physical body, they're interested in the soul that which is precious to Allah So the war and the battle is for the ears of humanity. When they gain the ears of humanity then they'll go after the eyes. So then the safeguard, we see it by satanic influence, that should encourage the believers that this is very real. Look how much shaitan pays his influencers, how many people go 200,000 people to a concert, 100,000 people to a concert because these are very high priests. They have the ability to destroy and break down the doors of many souls. Don't think they're something small, shaitan is paying them hundreds of millions of dollars for the damage that they do. So imagine then what type of difficulty Allah are going to put upon these people for the destruction of what they've done to humanity. But because you can see the negative by the, the law of opposite we should understand the positive. There is an immense battle, look what Shaykh is saying, look at how they're battling for the ears of humanity. As a result the guided and safe one is the one who understood and begins to safeguard their ears, clean their ears, perfect their ears and that they listen to their salawats. As soon as they listen to their salawats they're now trying to make a connection with the shaykhs, with the energy and to connect to hear their soul and their inner guidance and their inner coordinates. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.